Warning, this video will contain spoilers for The Walking Dead Season 7, Episode 7, Sing Me a Song, so do be cautious as you go ahead and watch this video. What is going on everyone, this is Ninja Geek here, and welcome back to another episode of The Walking Dead Reviews, getting pretty dang close to the mid-season finale, yes we are. But in this episode, I feel of course that I think a lot of you as well will feel that it has been a lot better than the last week's episode. I really was confused on what that was last week what we have seen, but this week tied a lot of things together for us, especially heading into the mid-season finale and going on further into the second half of Season 7. This episode not only brought us together with more Carl on Negan action, and we get to find out more about, more on, I guess, their backstories and leading up into uh, getting to know each other more as well. You know, this episode was mainly based on Negan and Carl, but also aside of that, getting to know what the other characters are finally feeling after recovering from what happened at the beginning of Season 7 to what they're planning on doing and how everything is coming together at the end. And at the beginning of the episode, we see Michonne going just about her day like a normal day, trying to eventually make a roadblock, which we see at the end of the episode, but we really don't know what's going on in this beginning shot. She's obviously walking down the street whistling a song, and then she takes out a couple of walkers and starts dragging them. And, you know, we really have no idea what was going on in her mind. But obviously she has it set in her mind about what she wants to do. She going out and doing her own thing is sort of like what Carl is trying to do. Go out to go out and uh, kill Negan. But getting more into what Carl is, we obviously found out from last week's episode uh, that the, the preview was that Jesus escaped from the vehicle. And Carl, you know, apparently they were going to be like this team. Like, yeah, they could do this together. Together. It seemed like that at first, like, yes, you know, with the smile that Jesus had, they thought that they could do this together, uh, since they are, of course, on the same side. But the obvious problem is that Carl does not want to listen to that. He actually wants to go in and take out Negan, so Jesus jumps out of the back and hides while Carl continues on, and it's just really confusing at this point because obviously it seems as though Carl knows that he wants to die at least for a good cause because first of all he's not even in his own truck holding a weapon that is not even his on land that is not even his uh, everything belongs to Negan so it's just really random and uh, awkward when Carl shoots two of his men and comes out and tells everyone to there to stand down their guard it's like there's absolutely no way this one kid is gonna just screw everything over for Negan, and it's obviously apparent, but the the thing that I would also like to stress here is that Carl did more in that one moment than Rick did in the entire season seven. Uh, Rick is just falling, I guess, cowardly to Negan, and it's weird to see him in that sort of state. It's not like Rick can really do anything about it, but Carl takes that upon himself. This kid, Rick's kid, is actually doing more than, I guess, Rick himself, and Negan takes this upon himself to learn more about Carl, because he knows that this kid is not just some dumbass that's just going in and going on a suicide mission, even though that's what it seems like. He knows that this kid is smart, and he knows like that this kid can manipulate and do a lot of things like that. And uh, It's just interesting to see the connection that Negan tries to connect with Carl to... I guess you could say to even bring him to a dark side, like, so to speak, with, let's say, Star Wars, uh, you have the dark side of the Force, and it seems like... You know, uh, another moment where Darth Vader is trying to lure Luke to the dark side to fight with uh, Vader. And it seems like Negan is trying to do the same thing to get into Carl's head because he knows that he's a smart kid and he can't just, you know, drag him in and do it. I mean, he can because he's Negan. But it's not going to be the same effect as if he actually tries to manipulate him to become part of Negan uh, in the Saviors himself. And I think that's what, overall, in my own opinion, about what he's trying to do within this entire episode. But as I was saying, about the connection between Negan and Carl. Instead of Negan really punishing him at first, he takes him on a tour, and one of the first things that we get to see is a room full of Negan's wives, a bunch of them, and, you know, Carl's really confused at this at first, because even us as the viewer, we haven't yet seen a whole bunch of his wives. We know that he has a lot of women that he hangs around with, but we really haven't seen anything uh, like this before, where they are actually all hanging out and doing what they want to do, so on and so forth, but the one shot that I actually thought was really interesting here within this part was the two shot of Negan and Sherry, who, of course, is uh, one of Negan's wives, and 
and uh, ex uh, Dwight wife. So it's uh, it's very interesting to see the story between Dwight and Sherry and how they're kind of trying. They it's like Dwight wants to connect back with her, but she knows it's just going to be bad overall. Um, but we can see in the two shot that Negan's face isn't really lit up a lot. It's more in the dark, uh, like in a darker light. Uh, if that well, not really a darker light, but you know what I mean. It's not. It's all shaded up, which kind of shows that. He, of course, you know, darker light means that he's evil, but the fact that really just made sense of the whole moment was the way that we see Sherry within this shot, because we don't really see uh, directly on her face, like, completely, like, first uh, look onto her face. It's more of a side angle shot where she's a little bit ahead and looking back towards Negan, whereas Negan's looking more from the back and looking a little bit slanted to the right, looking at Sherry. And so it makes for, like, a half-sided face of Sherry in the light, of course, which means it, it, it gives off somewhat of an effect that she wants to be truthful and be nice and everything to Negan because, of course, she doesn't want to see anything happen. But at the same time, there it seems like she's there's, like, something that she doesn't want to tell him. There's something that we as the audience don't know, and there's something hidden that I think could come out, come about in a later episode and could actually be what happened at the end of the episode, which we will talk about when we get there as well. But Sherry's a very interesting character, and I really like her role within this show and what she plays. Uh, and and especially you can even see that after the fact that, you know, Negan says that he's going to deal with this situation of one of his wives cheating uh, in his own manner. But then we see Sherry, you know, go for a drink, uh, slam, sort of slam down the glass and start to cry a little bit. And you could see the emotion that's being pulled, trying to keep it within herself that's coming out little by little. So, of course, Negan pulls Carl into one of his private rooms and he is, of course, cracking jokes like the typical Negan. And of course, somebody, Fat Joseph, I think, comes in. I think that's what his name was to deliver Lucille because he accidentally left it out there by the trucks when, of course, Carl killed, gunned down two of his men. And he's cracking jokes about, you know, treating Lucille like a lady and all of that. And he really wants to get into Carl's mind that, you know, he, it's everything that he says, he doesn't say it exactly to be literal, like a literal meaning to it. Um, and he, it even comes about later on in the episode when he's talking to Olivia after they head back to Alexandria in a little bit, but in this one part, uh, talking to Carl, trying to get to know him, ta having Carl take off his eye patch to show him his eye and what we actually can see it for the first time, what it looks like since the incident happened, uh, with Ron and going and learning more about obviously we know about Carl's past but Negan does not and then he makes Carl sing a song for him all just because you know Negan obviously is in charge but of course because Carl gunned down two of his men and it is a fair payment I guess you could say in Negan's terms however uh, when he's asked to sing a song he he can't think of any and I guess this is fine in the the universe that he's in maybe he just forgot a lot of songs but if I was in his spot it wouldn't take me that long to to think of a song or to say yeah I don't know any songs like that is obviously a lie and Negan knows that I mean I don't know uh, what songs Carl himself in the context of the show has listened to when he was little or has known but I'm pretty sure it doesn't take that long to come up with a song maybe it takes a little bit to actually sing the song but I mean coming up with one it took him a little bit, so I don't know about that one, Carl. But definitely, you can see as he's singing this song, the struggle that Carl is trying, not only trying to sing it because um, it's just the the internal conflict within him, essentially, that wants to not do it, but he's forced to do it. But not only that, because Negan has Lucille, and he's acting as if he's bashing in his skull right next to him. And Negan just says, no, 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 don't let me distract you while you're singing. That's obviously a big no-no. And so he continues and finishes up this song. Poorly sung, I do have to say, from a standpoint. But, of course, you know, it is the best that he could have done within that time period. So I actually connected with this part of the story. What I actually found out in the beginning when they started showing the previews, they showed the past where Eugene and Abraham found, like, a bullet-making facility where they can, in fact, produce a uh, mass amount of rounds to, of course, use for themselves. And that's what they were planning on doing. And we saw that within the preview. And I 
I was like, why would they flash back to that one particular episode? Oh yeah, I remember back two episodes ago, not last week's episode, but the week before that, how Rosita wanted to uh, make have Eugene make her a single bullet, and I was like, oh, that's probably going to be in this episode, and so it is, and... At first, of course, we know that Eugene says, yeah, I will ma- I'll make you a bullet. Well, we actually don't see him say it on screen, but, you know, he wants to. And then he kind of contemplates himself because uh, he's trying to think of what's actually right for the group, if this is the right decision to do. But Rosita talks him into making the bullet, and he ends up doing it. And I think that he does it just because he knows that he's the weaker person, that Rosita is a much stronger character than he will ever be. I mean, he has these smarts, but he's not that strong in terms of influential and experience, so obviously Rosita's going to control him in that matter. Now, uh, there was one question that you would come up with and say, well, does making that bullet really going to make that much of a difference? Well, one bullet could actually be the case of life or death, and that bullet should, in fact, work, because Eugene knows probably what he's doing and it it worked in the gun that Rosita tested it in so from that information I would honestly say that it, it was good for Eugene to make the round but at the same time at the exact same time that it was good for him to make that bullet for to put in the round to for it to go into the gun I don't know if it's exactly right for it to be in Rosita's hands at this point because her mission is completely different from Spencer's from anybody else's in the entire group like Spencer doesn't thinks that Rick is not a very good leader and he would like to take leadership over Rick because Rick when he came in he completely destroyed everything that Alexandria stood for and his mother uh, Deanna obviously stood for. And Spencer goes upon himself to go a different route, but Rosita it has a different mind frame, and maybe she'll change once she finds out what Spencer has in mind, inviting the kingdom to Alexandria, uh, with, of course, the help of Morgan, as hopefully we're going to find out later, because obviously Morgan was the one that connected with the kingdom, um, and it's going to obviously be interesting to see that, and we'll talk more about that at the end of the episode, but... From just not knowing what's going to happen in the future, I don't feel that the bullet is safe. That with the round is safe with Rosita in with it in her hands, and it, I think it's just that simple. That Eugene should have made it, but at the same time he was going to make it anyways because she probably obviously would have forced him to. So then Carl eventually steps up to Negan. Instead of being bullied around, he comes full out and says, "You're not going to kill me or any of our group because." You just don't want to do it. You don't have the strength to do it. And it's a very powerful statement for Carl himself to make because even Rick couldn't make such a statement to Rick because otherwise, you know, he would have thought that his head would have been bashed in. But Carl makes that sort of statement and he's actually willing to kill himself to jump out of a window so that Negan doesn't have to do it for him. And that really shows to Negan, I guess, how smart of a kid and how strong of a kid that Carl actually is. And with that said, as he's taking him back to Alexandria, we see Jesus on the roof of the trailer. And then as the shot progresses into uh, Negan telling Daryl uh, that he's just going to take Carl back and he wants to put Daryl back in timeout for even saying like, oh, if you do anything. And I think obviously, you know, we know that Negan's trying to train Daryl to become a soldier because he obviously clearly states that. Um, and then we see Jesus gone within the next scene. So at this point, and when we even come back to Alexandria after that Jesus is nowhere to be found so obviously he was with them on the ride back so he knows as well as Carl knows as well as Olivia knows that in the upcoming future that Negan is actually at Alexandria um, at the time that the kingdom also arrives there that are are, are also there and Negan just does not know and this obviously sets up for the mid-season of season 7. So obviously as I've just discussed Olivia meets Negan greet like fully at the door completely surprised that he's even there and Negan's by himself he's not with a group he just came with Carl back to Alexandria which could be dangerous for him because 
he's really the only outsider here. And obviously, you know, no one's going to take out Negan because if he does, then Negan's not going to come back to the Saviors, and that's going to be a big, huge ordeal. Uh, but obviously we know that that's not going to happen because it's only the mid-season, so obviously that's not going to happen. But Olivia really steps up for herself here by smacking Negan after he starts making rude comments to her, only making jokes. But in reality, you know, Olivia is not really that kind to that type. And then he makes Carl show him a tour around the place. And it even goes as far as to Negan meeting Judith for the very first time and holding her as if he was taking the place of a father figure. And I just wonder what would have happened if Rick was there. Because last time Rick uh, was there and Negan obviously came... He, there was no, like, contact with Judith at all. I think she was, like, someone else was holding her or taking care of her. Or she was other in other good hands. But this time, Rick wasn't even there. And if he was there and saw Negan, you know, tr doing exactly what he was doing, would he g go the Carl route, maybe, and do something that normally he wouldn't do? Would he come back to old Rick? Or would he just stand there with that look on his face that he's just really angry but then try to snap out of it so that <laughs> Negan doesn't do anything? Uh, we won't know that. But at the same time, we don't know when Rick's coming back either. And we're going to get into that actually in the preview of next week's episode, what happens with Rick and Aaron on their journey through scatter scavenging supplies out there to try and give to Negan. But... It is just really surprising uh, when we see Olivia stand up for herself because, you know, in in the earlier episode, Olivia was being bullied by Negan by telling her that she didn't even do her job right. And it, she was about to just be dead at that point. But at this point, she stands up for herself and now she's out of the picture when she tries to go make them lemonade uh, and Carl and is showing Negan around the place and, and only they know that... He's there, which is what gets me into the next point when the kingdom is at Alexandria from uh, Spencer obviously greeting them in, I guess, because he knows that they're there somehow. Uh, he knows apparently about the kingdom from probably from Morgan, my best guess is, because otherwise, you know, they were pretty separate communities. And this is where it leaves into the kingdom starting to connect with the Alexandrians, which we'll get about uh, in a little bit, which is coming close to the end of the episode. But one thing that I want to go back to is with uh, Sherry, and maybe possibly it could be her that left that go now note to Daryl in his cell. And the reason why I say it's Sherry is because I think that it's the most uh, possible character out of everyone. It could be Dwight, right? It could be Dwight. Maybe Daryl spoke to him before in previous episodes that we've seen him in and Daryl in that really spoke to Dwight. And Dwight could have wrote the note to just say, you know, you got to get out now. Uh, obviously, Negan is gone and you got to get out now. But I think that it's Sherry, and the reason is is because there has been a connection since the past couple of episodes uh, where we've seen both of them in it together that I really think that she's hiding something that we're going to find out either at the midseason or after that, and uh, we, we won't even know if that's going to take place in the midseason because actually the the preview is of Rick and Aaron out, and by the time that they even get back, who knows what's going to happen by the midseason. But it's just re really interesting to find Find out who wrote that note, that go home note to uh, to Daryl in the cell, and I think that honestly, in my own personal opinion, it could be Sherry. But you can let me know your thoughts on that down below. But all of this tying together, I think, sets up perfectly for the mid season of season seven and potentially what it could end with. Now we see the kingdom starting to come together to the Alexandrians. And uh, obviously the Hilltop already knows the Alexandrians, which the Saviors don't even know that the Hilltop know the Alexandrians. And now we just need the kingdom to come together to know the Alexandrians to start up a fight. But the thing is, it's obviously nothing is going to go down in the mid-season finale. There's too much information to even bother covering that it would just be nonsense for them to start up some sort of war within the mid-season finale but the big question is that Negan is there all by himself and he probably obviously has no clue that the kingdom is there and he knows the people at the kingdom because obviously he controls them and so what would he do if he walked out and just found them 
at the, in, in within Alexandria, and obviously this is due to Spencer taking action after he doesn't want Rick to be leader, and we obviously know what Rosita's plans are and what even Michonne's plans are because now Michonne's trying to hunt after Negan herself, and he's not going to be at the sanctuary when or if they arrive there. Uh, because obviously Negan's going to wait for Rick to get back. And speaking of that, the preview shows Rick and Aaron, of course, trying to get the supplies. And if it does show that and they're still trying to get supplies within the next episode and they're not heading back just yet, it makes me think that by the mid-season, like the way ending of the mid-season finale, it's just going to be... Uh, some sort of cliffhanger with dealing with the second half of season seven because I can't see them squeezing in them scavenging that stuff and then Rick heading back and something happens in the middle of the episode and then something else happens and it continues on for a complete ending so that is just my prediction of what will happen in the mid-season finale but I like how all this combines together uh, for, you know, with this episode, especially between the, the, the ties between Carl, Carl's past Negan learning about what happened to his mother, uh, to Carl's mother, I should say. Um, and you know, he, he's obviously saying that he is not trying to be literal, but you know, he understands where this guy, where Carl, this kid is coming from from his, uh, a certain standpoint, and I think that he tr wants to try and make that clear within this episode, plus we see all of the other stuff, meaning Rosita trying to figure out what she wants to do, where Michonne's path is going, uh, what Eugene it was thinking and now is thinking to, uh, to what Spencer is actually thinking and doing in that term, and we don't even know what's going to happen when Rick comes back. Maybe Spencer does something and tells Rick that he doesn't need to be leader anymore. Maybe he tells it to him to his face, but of course we don't know. But that was a huge episode to cover, big episode, lots of stuff happened, and I really did enjoy this episode, and I really do enjoy all the episodes with Negan in it, but it's just that uh, this one I think was very special because it was something different that we don't really get to see a kid like Carl, for example, come out of nowhere and start to bond with the biggest enemy I think the show has had uh, ever in its lifetime. But you can let me know your thoughts on everything that I discussed down below. Of course, this is Ninja Geek. I will see you on next week's episode, the mid-season finale. I'm out, and peace.